Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press, the segment where we review uh, the daily newspapers. And we have in the studio with us to discuss and analyze the papers, uh, legal practitioner, Mr. Liboro Sashama. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. And um, like they say in Nigeria, happy new month. Yes, happy new month. <laughs> if you're getting those BCs, don't be offended. It's, it's become culture. Let's uh, start with uh, the punch, okay? Let's kick off with the punch newspapers this morning, see what we can find uh, over there. The first big one that you can see on your screen, which is going to be showing in a bit, it says uh, states fail to make vaccine plans. Federal government blames politics for delay. It says it's the responsibility of the federal government to provide vaccines for states, says uh, Canus. And also politics and logistics due uh, to no fault of Nigeria causing delay. And that's once again from the federal government. Mm. Um, we also can find on the Pontius Morning external reserves hit $36.39 billion on improved crude oil price. Experts and nurses differ as presidency warns of fresh lockdown. Uh, also, Buhari fails to summon police uh, council meeting. IG's tenure ends today. Also on the punch, 49.68 billion naira spent on pipeline repairs in 10 months, says the NNPC. Uh, we also can find with regard security now, work with Niger, Chad and Cameroon, Zulum tells service chiefs. Federal government should encourage state ownership of ranches, ex-rep is saying. And also, uh, we can find on the punch this morning, Basita resumes sugar production in 2023. Uh, NPF driver arrested in Oshun with Lagos stolen car. I'm guessing that's a Nigerian police force driver. Um, Lagos creates special squads to tap, tackle Apapa gridlock for the 1,000th time. We're hearing of uh, efforts to tackle the gridlock. Uh, we'll see if this one works. All right, let's uh, now move to um, Ibrahim Shoma. It's um, um, states fail to make vaccines pla vaccine plans. Federal government blames politics for delays. It says politics and logistics due to no fault of Nigeria are causing the delay, and that's from the federal government. And um, it's the responsibility of the federal government to provide vaccines for states. Uh, it's coming from Kano. Mm. You, you see, these are uh, comical. When you hear things like this, you just laugh and you ask yourself, you know, what have we been, been doing? Even before the vaccine, you know, serious-minded countries were already preparing, you know, and expecting vaccines. Some of them had, you know, budgeted money to, you know, their research institutions to create a vaccine. If you remember also, there were some, um, you know, um, applications sub submitted by various organizations um, to, to NAVDAC to review their discoveries. And one would have expected that all of these logistic problems, at the moment the vaccine was announced and accepted, you know, worldwide, one would have expected that we immediately put, begin to put logistics in place. That's to show seriousness on the part of a government that takes the life of its people seriously. A government that is crying, shouting of um, imminent lockdown and increased numbers in um, uh, uh, COVID-19 patients and then releasing protocols upon protocols. So one would have expected. So what's the NCDC doing? That the, the logistics would have been in place even before even placing the order. But as we speak, if you remember, we talked about this sometimes uh, ago. And we talked about the logistics that all of this idea of, you know, um, importing vaccines I think it was Manita that raised the question of the heat and the storage. Mm -hmm. So with what this had revealed is that we're never ready. And so with issues like this, do you expect the ordinary man on the street to actually believe that there is COVID in Nigeria and that the federal, even though people are dying of it, and that the federal government means what they say when they say the numbers are increasing? You know, and then when you, when you just oppose this with the fact that if, uh, 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 Buhari President Buhari is asking Nigerians to wear masks to avoid the second lockdown. You just ask yourself, are these people clownish? Mm. Or, you know? And then they, they are both passing. The Kano state government said, no, it's your duty to provide for us. Mm. The federal government has said, no, the delay is not our fault. You know, it's logistics. And we, we always have a way of blaming these issues on logistics. INEC is unable to deploy materials for election. 
we blame it on logistics. Now you are not able to deploy vaccines, <laughs> you blame it on logistics. Vague, very vague. Interesting. Let's uh, quickly turn to another story here on the front page of the newspaper. Which of them would you like to highlight? Yes, um, on the um, Apapa gridlock, okay. quickly. This is not the first time they are setting up tax force, and I hope it works this time. The federal government has set up tax force, um, headed by a very good friend of mine, Kayode Okwe, if I was a former commissioner for transport in Lagos. And uh, at a point, he kept giving me updates on the fact that um, you know, they had cleared most of this gridlock. So if that's, because last week he told me that um, there were a report and he had to go to Abuja. And I even, you know, um, I, I had expected that if this traffic had been cleared, so what will Lagos State Government be setting up another tax force for? So if there's already a tax force set up by the federal government, why not work with, you know, the existing one and find a way? Yeah. For me, it is not just tax force. The problem, from what I also gathered from him, is the fact that, you know, the, the operators of the ports, and some uh, I also discussed with some um, port users, the, the operation in the port is, you know, um, deliberately slow. And so that also delays the movement of trucks in and out. So a situation that um, would ordinarily have taken, you know, the processing of documentations and clearance, let's say 30 minutes, it will take two days or three days. And so when that happens, there's going to be clog. And then why also, why are we not looking at? There, if you, do you know if you get to a papa port, there are rail tracks from the ports outside, you know. This, I, I expected that people who, 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 who built, you know, those infrastructures had intended that at some point you will have to, you know, carry cargoes and uh, um, containers using... Uh, train. I was watching um, a, vid a video sent to me by somebody from India, a truck carrying more than 1,000 containers. So imagine, uh, sorry, um, a, a train. train carrying more than 1,000 containers. So imagine having a train from a papa to Nicha, ferrying all the containers going to Nicha. You won't have all of this traffic. traffic. Yes. But because, you know, the, we, we, always, um, we always have this conspiracy theorist of, oh, look, maybe the owners of the trucks do not want the roads to work or the facilities to work, and that's buck passing also, and that's why there's, um, the train can't work. If government means business, there is no way these things would work. All so right. tax force it, it, will only, only give you, you know, a breeder for a few, few, few days, and then the problem will come back even bigger. And, and, and stronger. And then lastly, quickly, okay. uh, on uh, Boko Haram, Zulum had advised the new service chiefs, but I had expected also that there was um, a joint tax force between Cameroon, Chad, and Niger to tackle Boko Haram. And even the, the at some point, the commander-in-chief of, the, the, uh, um, of uh, Chad um, did lead his uh, army so Boko Haram enclave in, in, in their part of the, you know, the, the northeast. So this having to work with those people again now, for me, I, anyway, he's at the theater, so he, he should understand. Maybe the former ones did not uh, work with them. But I think that since, you know, this is a fight that spreads across these countries, if they must defeat this uh, menace or find solution to it, there needs to be, you know, massive collaboration. All right. Well, we're really running out of time. So let's quickly turn to the next newspaper, Nigerian Tribune. It says, Boko Haram strikes as new service chiefs visits Meduguri. Governor wants stronger ties with DJ, Chad, Cameroon, and CDS promises boost in fight. No going back on strike. And that Sanu and Nasu begin mobilization as ultimatum expires Friday. COVID-19, wear masks to avert lockdown, President he warns. Also, Zenit Bank emerges most, Nigeria's most valuable banking brand. Kogi Governor releases 3.98 billion naira for road projects. FBN Holdings announces new board appointment. APC registration, discordant tunes as exercise begins nationwide Tuesday. Massive smuggling puts... 3.4 trillion naira rice investment in jeopardy. Kano governor calls for legislation to ban north-south 
cattle movement. As well as this one saying anxiety as United Arab Emirates declares Nigerians must travel directly to Dubai. As schools resume in Ado State, NUT insists on strike, tells parents to keep children away. And this one, Makinde CP, are the top security officers visit Ibarapa. Yeah, uh, quickly, I would touch on just two topics. I, 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 I spoke about um, security already. Security already. Um, strike. Sanu and Nasu insist on going on strike. Now Asu has called up theirs. It is the turn of Nasu and Sanu. I, I don't know why we keep going back and forth with this strike. And it's so bad now that we really don't even bother about the standard of education in Nigeria. We are so very boastful when maybe one university is rated among so many in Nigeria and then we just go to town with it. But we are not bothering. Year in, year out, you know, universities are rated in the world. It is so sad that there's so much brain, brain drain. Serious-minded people and those that can afford it, serious-minded people are looking for opportunities to go lecture abroad. Those that can afford it are sending their kids even to Kotonu to go to school. And we are not bothered. It doesn't even bother us. It doesn't bother the government, provided the first thing we want to do, once you appointed a councillor now, nominated a councillor, a local government chairman, the first thing you want to do is how to relocate your family to Canada or America or London. And yet, you keep telling your people that they should have faith in the government. When you, your attitude does not exude faith in the system. You have vice chancellors whose children are schooling abroad. You have lecturers who are saving money to send their children abroad. And yet you say that you know, there's hope at the, at the end of the tunnel. The, in Edo, uh, school teachers are going on strike. NUT is going on strike and insisting that the children should remain at home. What is even a roadmap for education in Nigeria? The answer is zero. And then on this cattle grazing and the movement, I, I am happy that now the Kano state government is talking about it. If it was a southern governor that, you know, that had this. mooted this idea, you know, would have played politics with it. Yeah. Thank God it's coming from a Fulani man who is saying that, look, this is not sustainable. This idea of having to trek from Sokoto to Calabar, from Sokoto to Ogu, you know, all in the name of grazing cattle. If you look at statistics, we are not in the top 20, you know, um, exp exporting countries of processed you know, beef. beef. We are not in the top 20, you know, um, uh, countries um, in terms of meat production because we do not have a feasible plan to graze our cattle. This is a 1922 model of grazing True. cattle. True. All right. um, Quick, yes. All right, yeah, I was just going to say you should quickly speak on the uh, 4.3 or 3.4 trillion hour rise investment. In exactly, Germany quickly. Out of uh, smuggling. The, 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 you, you see, when, when the Nigerian government, you know, closed their borders, the reason, the primary reason for closing borders was that, you know, to curtail rice smuggling yeah. and arm, small arms smuggling. And now, we just closed the borders and we went to sleep. I did say at that time that at the time, by the time we wake up, we would have realized that the world had moved. So today, we have opened some of the borders and yet... The smuggling is, in fact, even when the borders were closed, there was still smuggling going on. It means we do not have a plan. We really don't have a plan in place. One would have expected that you, just like Todd Milan Bridge, you close Todd Milan Bridge to effect repairs. When we close the borders, one would have expected that, you know, we identify all of those, re, all of those uh, 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 um, uh, inhibitions and then fix them at least 60, 70 percent. But today, we are back to what led to the closure. I wonder what the president's uh, supporters will say now. Because last year, they were, oh, yes, we are now self-sufficient in rice production. And yet, you have foreign rice all over the market. Sure. And yet, now, we are back to that same problem. What are we going to do? The answer is zero. Mr. Right. Shama, we have just about two or three minutes left. So let's just turn to the Nation newspaper. No, you can go. All right. It says, uh, let's, let's look at the other stories we haven't touched. This one says, Nigerian equities rally 1.3 trillion naira gain. Uncertainty as IGP Adamo retires today. COVID-19 situation, one in five tested Lagosians virus positive. NCDC says South accounts for 60% of 
debts. And this one also says mainland bridge reopens 2023 push for Jonathan intensifies. And that's basically it. We'll just have uh, two, two minutes to speak on this, please. Yeah, quickly. Um, electricity tariff, labor push for 40% uh, slash. It's killing. Do you know that between January 12th, uh, January 2nd, and yesterday, I had spent close to 80,000 naira on electricity, prepaid meter alone. I am telling you, in my house, not talk of the office. And so you wonder what the ordinary man, ordinary Nigerian would be going through in terms of tariff. And yet you expect people not to bypass electricity when your minimum wage cannot even, you know, restore. Not, I'm not talking of the generator, the fear. You know? So I think governments need, and yet you're talking about even bailing out um, uh, what do you call it now? The um, uh, distribution companies. Government is, you know, setting aside a fund for them. If you're going to set aside a fund for them, will that reduce the tariff? It will say if it will help to reduce the tariff and stabilize, that would be fantastic. But otherwise, I really do not see any need. Sadly, for we're, we're running out of time, and we have mm -hmm. to we have to call it a day and off the press uh, at this point. Thank you very much, Mr. Libor Shama, for your very timely analysis. My pleasure. All right, so we'll now go on a very short break and return to discuss what happened today in history many years ago.